In this video we will explore how people who live in a non-electric agricultural or hunter-gatherer society sleep. We will look uh, specifically at people of the Hatsda tribe and people living in a small-scale non-electric agricultural society in Madagascar, uh, with the hopes of establishing how native people around the equator sleep when they aren't being subjected to artificial light. Uh, the purpose of this video is to explore the natural sleeping pattern of humans uh, when they aren't being subjected to artificial lighting or social pressure, and the results are quite interesting. Stay tuned. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. Um, so yeah, let's talk about how people live in non-electric societies. Uh, these two tribes are pretty different from each other, but uh, both in terms of lifestyles and sleep. The study I'll be uh, basing the Madagascar society on is called Segmented Sleep in a Non-Electric Small-Scale Agricultural Society in Madagascar, and it's written by Samson et al. Uh, the study explored the sleep pattern of people living on Madagascar, and what they found is uh, quite interesting. These people had sleep patterns that resemble dual core, dual core 1 extended, uh, or in other words, they split their night sleep and napped during the day. These findings are really cool, because there aren't going to be many populations that split their night sleep in today's society, uh, but this group certainly does. Addi additionally, they also utilize the midday, midday energy dip to sleep almost every day. Uh, the sleep schedule of those people is probably like this because they don't have the same environmental pressures as hunter-gatherer societies like the Hazda or Pairaha tribes. Um, and so they can allow themselves to sleep during the optimal peaks of the night uh, without being worried about being attacked or something. Uh, by the way, we plan on releasing a video on the Paira tribe in the future, um, which is a tribe where people only sleep short sleep durations, like 40 minutes, nap only schedule resembling almost. Uh, if you don't want to miss that video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss when we upload it. Okay, the study about the Hasda people is called Hasda Sleep Biology, Evidence for Flexible Sleep-Wake Patterns in Hunter-Gatherers, and it's also written by Samson et al. These people have very inefficient sleeps, which means that they spend a lot of time in bed, but only actually sleep a small duration of it. And they also take opportunistic daytime naps. Unlike the Madagascar people, the Hatta people don't regularly wake up in the middle of the night for long durations. Uh, they also have very long sleep onsets, or it takes long for them to actually fall asleep. Probably in order to ensure that they don't get attacked while they're sleeping, because they're a hunter-gatherer society. If you're sleeping in a new location, predators are more dangerous when you're asleep. <laughs> and if they attack too quickly, you'll still be awake and therefore more capable to defend yourself uh, if they attack you. Which is probably why it takes longer for these people to fall asleep when they try to sleep. It's an evolutionary advantage. Uh, like the Madagascar people, the Hasta people wake up in the middle of the night, but as opposed to the Madagascar people, these people only do it for short durations. The reason why the Hasta people wake up in the middle of the night uh, more may also have to do have something to do with surprise attacks. Um, this is similar to the theory of why different chronotypes exist for humans. Some people enjoy being awake longer, uh, some waking up earlier, others have bouts of wakefulness in the middle of the night, and so on. By the way, the chance of all people um, in a tribe sleeping at the same time is quite small, uh, and thus the survival chance is increased. And this is because of sleep chronotypes, because of the different preferences people have to sleep. Uh, as I've mentioned, the Madagascar people don't have the same need to be awake around the clock, so they have more strict sleep times. While on the topic of sleep times, um, has the people have quite odd sleeps or sleep schedules. They are following a sort of flex flexible sleep pattern, uh, which changes quite frequently. This may also be in order to increase their survival chances. Uh, so one day you nap during the day, one day you don't 
and so on, but that's not all. Additionally, their sleep and wake times also change from day to day, which is pretty cool. Um, so one day you may go to sleep at uh, 9 in the evening, and the next you may go to sleep at 11. And this flexible sleep pattern is probably, as I've said, an adaptation to them being more vulnerable, vulnerable when they sleep. Okay, in this video I mentioned chronotypes, which we plan on expanding in another video. Regardless, the point of this video was to support the notion that uh, human sleep is naturally polyphasic, and that it's only monophasic when we're forced with social pressure or environmental changes or artificial lighting, these things. Uh, like those that arise from artificial lighting, as I just said. Um, even though these two sleep tribes have completely different sleep schedules, both of them are still polyphasic, where the Mad Madagascar people have a segmented-like sleep pattern and the Hosda have a siesta-like instead. Uh, both are, in other words, biphasic in nature. If you think that these results are cool, uh, be sure to show it by liking this video. What do you think about the sleep, natural sleep pattern of humans? Do you think that we're naturally monophasic or siesta oriented or segmented oriented or a mixture of all or only some of them? Tell me in the comments below what you think. Alright, have a good one and I'll see you in the next video. Nap well people!